Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. This time I'm going to show you how to enter and get through the third Dark World dungeon, Skull Woods. There are no prerequisite side quests to do before entering this dungeon, so we're going to start at the Swamp Palace and make our way to Skull Woods. Without further ado, let's get started. We're going to head to the west and then north, uh, just on this one screen here, so you want to transition up north. And then lift up this rock, similar to what you did after completing the Desert Palace and the Light World. We're going to skip the uh, flute player. Uh, we're going to skip the shovel, and we're also going to skip the flute. We're not going to get that till it's absolutely required. Um, but in this meadow to our right here, you can get the shovel and then warp to the Light World and get the flute by digging up a specific uh, flower patch. But we're going to skip that for now. It's not needed. And the way I want to do these guides is similar to how I did it for uh, Link's Awakening, where I don't go through the game with really any upgrades um, until they're kind of required. Uh, so that also includes extra items or weapons or anything like that. So getting back into Kakariko Village here, we are going to now go into the Lost Woods uh, from an entrance that we hadn't taken before. So you want to just get away from these guards that are here now that uh, Link is a wanted felon for quote-unquote kidnapping the princess. So we can go past these guards here. Uh, if they bother you a lot, you can kill them and then run into that lone tree in the middle there, and some apples will fall out that will restore your hearts. Once in the Lost Woods, you just want to walk to the east, cut the one bush, and then exit to the south. This tree here has a full magic decanter in it, but what we're going to do now is we're going to hammer down these pegs, lift up this rock to get to a teleporter. And then we're just going to go north and into Skull Woods. Uh, Skull Woods, I guess, is technically the entire outdoor area. Uh, most of this dungeon is fragmented. Uh, and depending on what hole you fall in or what uh, kind of rock face you move into, um, you just start at a certain point in the dungeon. So we're going to skip this first hole here. And then we're going to kill uh, or get some of these enemies out of the way. Uh, be careful. In these bushes, there's a high chance that there's a, a guard in them. We want to get to this rock opening here. And we're going to get the master key right away, or the big key. So we're going to kill everything in this room. Um, if you have sequence broke this game, and you did Misery Mire before this dungeon, you can use the red cane to uh, create a brick and then put it on this switch here. Uh, but this is a normal walkthrough, so we're not going to have any of those uh, really late game items at this point. Um, but if you're an aspiring speedrunner, that's usually what most people do. So, with all the Gibdos out of the way and the Jellyfish out of the way, we're going to wait for the Floor Master to come down one more time. We're going to kill it, and then we're going to drag this statue onto the switch. It's going to open the door, and then in this next room is going to be the big key. Let's right, so get the Gibdo out of the way, and then this one chest has the big key. I think if you bomb open that wall right there, I think it might lead to a fairy. It's been about 15 years since I've opened that wall, so I'm not 100% sure. But it could be. I'm not sure. But once you have the big key... You just go ahead and warp back, and then uh, just exit, and we'll go to another part of the woods and uh, fall down into the dungeon in another way. So one thing I do want to mention is, in case you fall down another area, uh, there are plenty of exits to this dungeon, and you actually only need uh, one key. Uh, technically two, but you really only need one to make it through the rest of the dungeon along with the big key. So you want to fall down the center path here, kill the Helmosaur, uh, it has a propensity to drop a fairy, so if it does, go ahead and restore your hearts. And place a bomb on this wall. And kill that enemy there. And then you want to walk along this wall. And then pull down the switch. And that's going to bomb open this wall here. It's going to be two mini moldorms, so you can go ahead and take care of them. Since you have the big key, you can open this chest for the fire rod. Fire Rod is a very powerful uh, kind of sub-weapon, but it can also be used to light torches from a distance, which is its primary purpose for us. Okay, so just go ahead and exit out of this room here. And then we're going to go back to where we got the big key. We're going to go back to that entrance. Yeah, these enemies are quite annoying, and you don't have the blue mail at this point, so everything deals a bunch of damage. But once you're back in here, we can then go to the west and then just dash to the west again. We're going to pick up a key in a pot here. Let's go ahead and pick this up. And then exit. And then we're going to come around here and we're going to go near where we would have gotten the Master Sword in the Light World. But instead there's going to be yet another dungeon entrance. But in order to open it, we need to take out the Fire Rod 
and throw a flame on the spine there. That will burn it up. If you do not have any small keys at this point, just walk down those stairs and then navigate the maze under this bridge. And then the chest that's in this room has the last key. So that's all you got to do. So in this room, just follow this path to uh, keep switching the floor tiles. Uh, alternatively, if you're a speedrunner, you can kind of hover over some pits and just eke your way across the room very quickly. But that's the real path you should be taking. So you want to just keep spamming the fire rod, kill these Gibdos. Uh, they have a high chance of dropping uh, magic decanters. Sometimes they'll give you a full magic decanter. Um, but you should have plenty of magic to uh, light those torches. If you don't, you got to go out and get some. Uh, but that's really the only way to do it. There's a hidden passageway through this middle curtain here. Or spider web. I'm not really sure what they're supposed to be. Uh, but kill the Gibdo to give you a key. And then in this room, there's nothing but a pit. And this is going to lead you to the dungeon's boss, Mothula. Mothula is a really interesting boss that has a bit of a hidden mechanic. Uh, it's clearly flying around, and clearly the floor is moving, and there's tektites chasing after you. But the hidden mechanic here is that if you hit the boss, whether it's with your sword or the fire rod, and it hits spikes when it like recoils back from your hit, if it hits spikes, your damage is nullified. So you need to be very careful uh, how you're hitting the boss and when you're hitting the boss in relation to where the boss is. Because if you hit it and then it bounces back and it, it hits the spikes, your damage is negated and that hit was worthless. So you have to be very, very careful. The boss only has one attack and it's that uh, triangle or triple fireball kind of chain. That's the only attack the boss has other than flying around. So you can really just spend your time looking at the floor, looking at the tektites, and then just hitting the boss whenever it gets near you. Uh, it seems a lot more deadly than it is, but as long as you don't panic and you just pay attention to the floor and the tektites, you can just hit the boss whenever it comes around and you'll be fine. But that's it. That's Skull Woods. It's one of the quickest dungeons in the game, and you only need one small key uh, to get to the end of the dungeon, and then you get a mandatory other small key, and you, you proceed to the end. It's very quick, very interesting use of the overworld uh, with everything else, but it's a cool dungeon, one of my favorites. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda a Link to the Past, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. You can also join my community Discord server and join the discussion there. If you're interested in supporting this channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.